Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to open up the public comment period. So because of COVID and the way we're having to have these meetings, uh, you need to submit a comment to Amber and uh, that will get submitted to the GTC and the WCTDA to review. Uh, old business approval of June's minutes. Make a motion. Second. 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 All right. All in favor? Uh, Any opposition? All right. All right. We will jump into financials. Start on page five. So here is the 2020 budget. Uh, broken down by the WCTDA budget, city tourism budget, the combined budget, and the actuals. Um, as you can see, uh, not a lot of money being spent yet as we were kind of getting a game plan through July and based on some past conversations that we've had in other meetings, uh, just trying to come up with um, where money is going to be reallocated to address certain things. Um, but that will start kicking up uh, as we move into the next few months. <clears throat> Any questions on that? All right. Jump around here. Uh, county collections. Allison is in training, and James is out sick. So. Yeah. So on page six uh, and seven, there are some notes at the bottom. Um, there's not much to look at right here because we're just starting out early in the fiscal year, but. Um, she did include the June numbers and the July numbers just to show the, how we closed out the fiscal year of 1920. Um, looks like she said the collections are down for July. She meant July uh, 20 uh, by close to 17%. The decrease is still due to the impacts of COVID-19. That's been uh, that's having on the <coughs> traveling market. Um, and she just wanted to mention that all customer accounts are current. Um, as we closed out last year and starting out this year. Um, so if we turn over to seven, uh, just on who's been reporting, it shows you the list of hotels there. And so you're saying these are the hotels that have been reporting right here? Yeah. And so it's a lot of hotels not reporting. Um, no, these are these all are of them? hotels. Okay, uh -huh. good. Mm -hmm. Yep, so the, all the hotels that are accounted for in, okay. our, in our market are okay. here, yeah. Um, and then if you, we should just said some notes again, collections are still down for the month just due to the impacts of COVID-19. And if we switch over to page eight, this is our profit and loss budget. Um, so again, it's still really early in the budget year, but we've collected uh, close to 8%. Um, our year-to-date collections are again down 17% just due to the lack of travel in our market for the month of July that we're starting out with. And it's like we have collected a little over 8%. She says we're on track with the budget for the month. But again, it's going to be hard to kind of know fully how we're going to perform <laughs> this due to uh, we're just still very unsure of how COVID-19 will continue to impact the traveler market. But right now we, we are on budget with what she did forecast. Any questions that I can relate to Allison? I'm not quite understanding that. She's saying that we're down 16%, but yeah, we're on budget. We're down 16% year over year. Year over year. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are, we're on track for what she projected just due to, oh. the, yeah, just due to the factors that were, that are affecting the travel market. Okay, good. Thank you. So this forecast is in consideration of COVID? Yeah, yeah. So when she set out to do the projections for the numbers, she did take into account mm -hmm. um, as best as she could how this would, how COVID-19 would still impact the traveling market right now. But um, it's still really hard to be, have the most accurate projections because we've never faced this before, so there's no trend to really mimic off of. Seems like she's pretty much on target. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's mm -hmm. done a good job between her and Catherine. It's they've done a really good job of projecting. All right, uh, city occupancy collections. So page nine. Uh, so uh, the 2019-2020 has been closed out there. Um, 
as you can see, the last few months there took a hit over what we normally projected. Uh, June, or excuse me, July of 2021, though, uh, 63,000 was collected. Uh, it's still down about 23% year over date. Next page has just got the bar graph showing the uh, collections by month uh, over past previous years, so we can look at trends. And then the star report on page 11. Um, so it looks like uh, ADR was down, rev par down, um, and revenue down. We're all down about 7.3%. I just want to point out, though, for occupancy, I mean, the reason why our collections are down is because uh, it sounds like the hotel market is selling at just a little bit of a lower price point than they were in the last year or two years. Um, but the occupancy seems to be balancing back out. So that's why you see a 0% change, which is a really good sign, meaning uh, it's slowly coming back online with travelers into the market, but it's still just not fair <laughs> to feel like everything's back on as normal. Here, you got to pay your same rate. So I think that's where we're seeing a little bit of the changes. And this is the countywide star report. So um, whenever we see the special trends, you see that even, even more so what's going on is that our top performing hotels are taking a hit on revenue because they're selling at a lesser price point. And I think travelers are being a little bit more... Um, mindful of their spending, so they might be staying at more of the budget-friendly hotels right now. Okay. Yes, let's go ahead. Yep, so page 12 just as a list of the hotels that were on that initial star report, and then page 13 uh, is the uh, top performing hotels that kind of mimic the Mac what we're looking for at the Maxwell Center. Um, so their occupancy is down only 6%, ADR down 5.3, RevPAR down 11%. Um, and so revenue's down 11% as well. But, you know, one thing to note, if you look from April to July, the occupancy is trending in the right direction. And we are nowhere near the negative downtrend uh, compared to our national averages. Um, I did not bring my national averages sheet with me. I left it on the desk. But we are still faring so much better than the state and national averages. And I think it has a lot to do with just what our economy is backed by. I mean, it's military, it's Duke Energy, I mean, you have Georgia Pacific, so you have these major uh, industries here that don't slow down in times like these, so that, that really helps our market. All right, any questions on those? No, just a comment, though. Uh, you know, the industry ought to be mighty proud of those numbers because there's a lot of industries that are, mm -hmm. they're down 60%. I mean, this thing has really hit a lot of industries. Um, so y'all, very Yeah, very. All right, inquiries? Uh, so there were 29 e-inquiries for the month of July. That was due to, um, we had a lap, a, well, I guess a lapse in some of the subscriptions that we would pay for to garner these uh, inquiries. Um, the agency that we were using paused for a little while, so we took a dip in our e-inquiries. So that should be going back up in the month of August um, now that we've got our media plan settled and we renewed our contract. And so just wanted, to, so we're gonna move on to item F for the History Channel. I hope everyone got a chance to view it. Sounds like some may have missed it, but um, it was, I thought, for 21 minutes of what you can film, I thought it did a very good job showcasing the few assets they were able to plug in about the city and the county, and they represented our area very well. Um, they had really great beauty shots of the downtown, cool drone shots over at Busco Beach. Um, so I was very pleased with how it was turned how the turnout went. Um, I hope everyone was too. I've heard very positive feedback from the community. And um, yeah, so I, I hope everyone got a chance to view it. If you didn't get a chance to view it, unfortunately, it's not a show that you can find on YouTube. Um, but if you have a subscription to Hulu or the History Channel is part of your major cable network package or satellite package, you can go online to the History Channel <coughs> website or the app that you have a subscription with. And you can view it, um, view it there. Um, but you can also view it on Amazon Prime come the spring. 
Uh, I'm still waiting on the viewership and uh, the viewership data, but um, I was supposed to get it yesterday afternoon. I may have just missed the phone call. So I hope um, maybe I can follow up with them today, and I'll send an email out letting you know what the, the viewership ratings were. So, yeah. Did everyone get a chance to see it? Yeah. I hope. Yes. Yeah? Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Um, new business? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so as you know, Josie's last day was the 14th of August. Um, and so since then, we've been receiving applications. The job posting closed out last week, and we received over 40 applications, and that was a huge surprise. Um, and every single one of them were qualified. It was a very tedious task to go through and really pick um, the ones that stood out the most. And so we've uh, put together a panel. There'll be four people on the panel um, that are representing different departments that maybe Josie worked very closely with that I think they would have really good insight and knowledge based for questions and exercise prompts to, to test their skill level and skill sets. Um, so we're going to start interviews on the week of September 14th. We've narrowed it down to six candidates that we'd like to start out interviews with um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So we're, I'm very hopeful that we can have an offer made by the end of September or beginning of October with hopefully a start date in mid-October. But these are very highly qualified candidates. I think, you know, unfortunately, I look at their applications, a lot of them were laid off uh, during the impacts of COVID. They work for ad agencies or tourism bureaus in other states. Um, so these candidates have an incredible amount of experience. And, and so I'm excited. And hopefully we can afford them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll keep you posted on that. And then um, just, I'm just going to move right down the list. So the Wings Over Wayne Air Show, I think everyone has heard by now. It was scheduled for 2021. It's been postponed to April 30th and May 1st of 2022. Um, that was just due to the fact that COVID is still having so <coughs> much impact on performer schedules to securing logistics and resources. And can you even have it by the spring? And there's so much planning and resources that pour into that, that it would be <coughs> a real tragedy if you weren't able to actually do it. And so I think they just made, um, they did make the safest call of postponing it a year, not entirely canceling it. Um, so unfortunately we won't have that for our hotel market in the spring of next year, um, but we will have it back online in, in 2022. And I don't believe it, it should conflict with the Cherry Point Air Show. I, I would assume they, Big Air Force and the Navy and Marine Corps worth that out. So uh, hopefully it's not too much saturation in the air show. I wouldn't assume that, actually. Because, <laughs> no, you know you'll have the same damn show yeah. on the same weekend. <laughs> I'm going to let them figure that out. So um, that's where we're at right now. It's, it's April 30th and May 1st, 2022. And um, Now, would they be rolling that every two years after that? Sure. Uh, that's also unknown. A lot of it has to do with um, decisions from leadership on the day, so we'll see. Um, historically, it's been biennial, so every other year in odd-numbered years. So I don't know if they're going to go back to that and want to do back-to-back -back airships. That's another huge investment of resources, too. And so I uh, we had another TV show come into uh, Goldsboro last week. Uh, the mayor was kind enough to uh, have a cameo in that show. It's called NC Weekend. I have a not what? Cameo. You're, you're part of the cast huh. for it, yeah. Like a guest spot. <laughs> what a cameo. Yeah. So there's a star, yes. <laughs> she called me a star. I didn't know yeah. it was. Uh, a special <laughs> guest. Yeah, and um, so it's a UNC. Oh, I went out there actually and they didn't have a damn bite of food. <laughs> really? Were they sold out? I thought they were closed. Wilbur's was closed when you were filming. That, yeah, 7 o'clock that night. Yeah, they were closed. Yeah, they probably sold out. It I was me, the, the guy, and Willis. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. No food. They sold out. They sold out. They've been selling out um, very regularly, so sorry you didn't get to eat. But... Why get paid the big bucks? Um, so yeah, NC Weekend, they came to Goldsboro. They filmed uh, mostly about Wilbur's um, because uh, Bob Garner, I don't know if you know Bob Garner, but he's uh, like a North Carolina celebrity. He's been around. He's a huge barbecue spokesperson for the state. He worked for WRAL for 30-plus uh, years. Um, so 
he does a lot of travel and food shows. And so he is based in Greenville. He came out. He was the main uh, host for the show, uh, interviewed the mayor. They plan to use the show as the season premiere. Uh, and it should air October 1st at 9 p.m. But I will get the dates um, more confirmed as we get closer. They'll have teasers that will be coming out, so I'll be sure to send those out as a reminder. Uh, we'll have more details, too, by the next board meeting. And then another TV show, Out and About. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's just a, another local well, regional show that WRAL does, and it's a travel show. Um, they plan to come out and start filming in mid-September. Um, we have a creative conversation. Uh, sounds good. I, so we had budgeted $2,000 for this uh, program. Um, being that we only had one applicant, I just wanted to leave it up to the board if you wanted to award them the 2000 yeah. It was a 1000 cap for two applications, but I don't see why not. It's in the budget. Yeah, I'll say just give them the 2000 Yeah, I don't see why not either. I'd be happy with that. I agree. Yep. Anybody have any opposition to that? Perfect. So we will do that. And that is the end. Oh, that was. Well, yeah, they're going to be here. 9 o'clock. They're going to be here at 1030. Can we tell them that? I mean, is it public now, right? Um, yeah, I probably will have a chance to let them know. Let, let, I'll, I'll let them know. Um, well, if they're watching, they know now. Well, yeah, so they are watching, yeah. <laughs> if they're watching, they know. I'll be in touch with them shortly with a formal announcement. Yeah. All right, does anyone have anything else they want to discuss? There's a question in the chat. Ask if they can say something about the History Channel. What's it say? Uh, can someone share something about the History Channel show? Sure, yeah. We had mentioned it a little bit earlier in the board meeting. Um, it aired on August 9th, um, and right now we're still waiting on the rating uh, viewership data to come in. Um, it probably is sitting in my office on a voicemail, uh, but I, I missed the call yesterday. Um, but hopefully if I get it in today, I'll be able to uh, share that information. Um, either have the figures, but they said that it's... The September 11th date passes and the governor makes a decision on what the next phase is. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.